Hi, my name is Colby and I am a creative entrepreneur and I make my living as a freelance artist and writer. Now, it wasn't always that way. I went to school to study English, majored in literary analysis, moved to DC to pursue a government job in communications, eventually went to a nonprofit to work in PR, media relations, and speech writing. And I really thought the first, you know, five years of being in the workforce that I was set in my career. Uh, until I discovered art and calligraphy and hand lettering and how all the things that I love about communication I can express through art as well. And so I became obsessed with researching different ways that you can make money as an artist because up until three or four years ago, I didn't know that you didn't have to be like an award-winning fine artist selling their paintings for a thousand dollars in art galleries to make a living. You, there are so many different ways to use your passion for art or creativity in general because this class doesn't necessarily only apply to artists, but that's the space that I'm mostly in, so that's why I'm focusing on that. Um, but there are lots of ways that you can use your art and your craft and your creativity to generate income so that you can support yourself doing something that you really love. Um, this class is called Ways to Make Money as a Freelance Artist, mostly because a few months ago I pulled up a list on my phone to um, think about all of the different ways that I could make money to prepare for my upcoming maternity leave. I had a baby a few months ago and I knew that I needed to build some savings and really get smart about what jobs I was going to pursue with my limited time. So I made a list called ways to make money and I listed off all of the ways that I knew that I could make money as an artist with the stuff that I had been doing um, the years prior to that. I started an Etsy shop a few years ago and I've had some smatterings of different jobs here or there. So uh, from all of my research and experience, I made this list, I narrowed it down to the uh, to the paths that I wanted to pursue and I found it really a helpful exercise, not only to list all the stuff that I knew, but also to, you know, weigh the different uh, jobs that I could pursue and help me decide which ones were really for me. So knowing how helpful it was for me as I was doing that, I thought, wow, I bet this would be helpful for other people too. Um, I also thought that if I had had a list like this that listed off all of the different jobs that you could possibly pursue as an artist three years ago when I started, man, cause I, could I have saved a whole lot of time. So knowing that it would have been, that a class like this would have been helpful for me was the first uh, switch in my mind that indicated this might make a good Skillshare class. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but I'm watching this on YouTube. <laughs> That's because I made this as a Skillshare class, but Skillshare took it down because they don't allow any classes that focus mostly on money. So that was a bummer, but I was still really passionate about it. So I decided to kind of repurpose it and post it on YouTube in a nine part series so that uh, you guys could get this information for free because I really think it's so beneficial and valuable um, to hear from somebody all of the different ways that you could possibly generate some income and support yourself. Not necessarily as full-time, you don't have to be full-time to find this beneficial. It could be you're looking to start a side hustle or you're looking to just like pay for the supplies that you keep buying because who doesn't need more art supplies? <laughs> Um, anyway, so I am so happy to share this class with you and I, just a, a couple disclaimers, this is not by any means like an in-depth look into every single career path you could possibly take. It's more of like a quick and dirty brainstorm of all of the ways that you might be able to generate income with your art. Um, because this came from my own quick and dirty brainstorm. So. Um, it basically lists all of the ways I can think of to make art, even ways that I don't personally do it right now, but I know that you can, and maybe with a smattering of thoughts in between. And then the last class, which will be posted, if you're watching this in real time, this is uh, the beginning of November 2019, um, the last class, which is part nine, 
will have like a final project and some links to some free resources that you can use to put all of this class together and uh, hopefully come up with some methods that will really help you narrow your career options as a freelance artist. So with that, I wanna thank you for watching this little video and I hope you enjoy. Let's dive right in. Um, I would recommend you get out your note-taking supplies because my slideshow does have bullet points that lists a bunch of the import most important things I'm talking about, and there is a link to the uh, PDF of the slides in the class description, but I, st um, I would recommend listening to me talking about all of these things because there will definitely be information that I didn't necessarily write down, but that I've learned and I will talk about as I'm thinking about all of these themes and going through the slideshow. So this is your chance, if you haven't already, to take out any note-taking supplies and be prepared to dive right in. So let's go. First, uh, this class is called the big three because as I have been, as I was looking into ways to make money <laughs> over the past few years, I've kind of narrowed it down to three main subcategories. So the first subcategory of ways you can make money, uh, client work. So client work is basically the way that I define client work is someone, a client, hiring you to do a, a specific job. So um, that could mean like if you have a client who is a bride or if you have a client who is a business or any other kind of thing, um, that's basically what client work is. When someone is hiring you to do something specific. Uh, the next one is teach, which I do a lot, um, so it feels like it should be self-explanatory, but teaching is when you take the skills you have and you put it into some form um, so that others can learn from you. So that could be in an online class or an in-person workshop or lots of other things, and we will go into that when we get to that section. And then the last of the big three I think is the most obvious, and that's kind of why I put it for last, um, that's to sell. If you want to sell your artwork, and there are a variety of different ways to sell artwork as well. So those are the big, the big three categories that we're mostly talking about. And I have this, the big three, as its own lesson. Um, because I want to talk about uh, balance uh, for a little bit. So there are lots of other ways probably besides these ones that you can pursue um, bringing in money through your artwork. And you can try all of them, and you can even try all three of these. But honestly, the best way to come up with the best work is to focus on a little bit at a time. So I'm not saying necessarily only focus on one at a time. But if you try to put 100% of your effort into all three of these at once, it's going to drive you a bit wonky. And you might not have time to focus on all of them at once anyway. So I would recommend if you're just not sure which direction to go, you're not sure which one you like, first watch this class because I talk about the pros and cons of all of these. Um, and gives uh, a few, not really in-depth, but a few suggestions about ways to go about them. But um, after you've watched this class, maybe just try one. Figure out one that you want to try and see if you like it. And the more you try things, the more you're going to figure out really what the best path is for you. So that's honestly the main goal of this class for me and your cl what your class project is going to focus on is how to narrow down what is your most lucrative and what's your most passionate route to making money as an artist. And so just be thinking about that as we go through this class. Um, and once again, note that this class doesn't cover, like, it doesn't go in depth into any of the topics really. It's just a brief overview of all of them with a list of 
um, basically everything that I could think of, which is not comprehensive at all. I'm sure there's a lot more that I don't even cover, but it's everything that I could think of in list form with some brief commentary. So um, with that in mind, let's move on to client work. So once again, uh, I'm going to give you my loose definition of client work. It is when you are hired by someone to do a specific job. So as an artist or a letterer or whatever kind of creative work that you do, if you make your money by um, taking on clients, that usually means the client is requesting that you make something specific based on their feedback and their wants and their wishes. And obviously that means you incorporating some of your own creativity, but it's not you coming up with something of your own volition. It's more filling a need for somebody else, right? Okay, so the people who you could be filling a need for are typically divided into two categories. The first category is a business. So client work can be B2B, which means business to business. Your business is helping another business in some way or form. You're creating something for them that will help them boost their business. Okay, so I have just a quick list of general things that are typically in the B2B category for artists, and this also counts for letterers. So I'm not going to go in depth into any of these like I mentioned before, but I am going to do a brief description of some of them. Okay, so first up, let's talk about uh, licensing. Licensing is a really thriving market right now where Basically, as an artist or a letterer, you give a business permission to use your artwork on their products um, or for their business for a set amount of time or for a percentage of their sales or whatever. So you're not selling them the art for them to keep the copyright themselves. You are, you still retain the copyright, but you're letting another business use your art so that they can make money. Okay. And I briefly mentioned this in a sentence before, but there's a difference between a full buyout. So like if a business buys, the, basically buys the copyright from you versus licensing, you licensing your art to them for a specific amount of time or a specific amount of products or whatever. Okay, licensing is a really big business <laughs> and it can be as, um, we're going to go more into just like where you license and how to do stuff like that in a little bit. But basically, it can be as small as like putting up a graphic on Etsy and selling it on Etsy or Creative Market, or like having an agent and working with brands like Target or Hobby Lobby or brands like that. So it's a really big, wide, vast business. And if you want to know more about licensing, and that seems like something that you really want to do, I would for sure check out Jenna Rainey's Brand Plus Brand course. Um, her Insta handle is at Jenna Rainey. Um, I am an affiliate for that course, so if you are interested in potentially exploring licensing, she has a signature course where she and her agent go in all in depth about licensing. So, but I'm not going to talk any more about that <laughs> because. This is a quick and dirty brainstorm, like I said. So licensing is one way to earn money in the B2B side of client work. Another really lucrative way to earn money in the B2B side is brand work. So branding is basically when a business designs their outward facing um, aesthetics. So like their logo, their color palettes, email templates, fonts. Um, ways that they design uh, signature products, things like that. Any any type of um, way that a business depicts or represents their business in an outward-facing way, like in a market or an email or anything like that. That's part. That's all part of their brand. And as a an artist. Um, businesses often like to work with artists to help them find their brand either like really in depth 
and help them with all of that stuff or maybe just like a one-off helping them create a logo or create uh, some graphics for social media or something like that so that's brand work custom work as a one-off can basically be anything <laughs> um, anytime a business reaches out to you for like a one-time thing whether it's to make them a graphic or it's to make a print for their customers or it's to make a design for an email blast or um, if you're doing like editorial illustrations for a magazine or a newspaper or something like that honestly the list is endless anytime a business might need some kind of illustration or lettering in a one-time like a one-off kind of a thing that's what I would classify as custom work. Um, then there's also retainer custom work, meaning a business, instead of just paying you for a one-time project, a business decides that they really like working with you and they want to pay you on retainer to create things for them every month. So that means they pay you a set amount each month uh, in exchange for you being willing to work for a certain amount of time every month doing projects within the scope that you already set uh, typically like in some kind of contract so like say you were on retainer with a business to do social media graphics for them um, they might pay you like a thousand dollars a month to do 15 hours a month of creating social media graphics or instead of hours to create like 10 social media graphics a month or 15 social media graphics a month or whatever um, whatever that may be so that's what retainer that's what the term retainer means for custom work um, another online way to work with a business is through influencer marketing a few of you might um, have seen some of your favorite makers do sponsored posts or talk about products that businesses have sent them and this is what influencer marketing is. It's when a business reaches out to you to say, hey, I think that your audience is my audience and I would really, I would love to work together so that we can help um, market this cool product that we have. And so then your job as the influencer is to basically create a post that feels like organic um, and feels like it's natural for you to be using this product so that the people who follow you might also be interested in purchasing that product as well. My one thing about influencer marketing is a lot of businesses will reach out to you, especially artists, will reach out to you and say, hey, will you do a review of this product in exchange for getting the product for free? And you should always get paid. That is my big thing with influencer marketing right now. Um, I think there are a lot of smaller up-and-coming artists who are just excited at the thought of a business thinking that they're, quote, good enough to be an influencer, and so they're totally willing to get this free product in exchange for creating a post or creating a video or, or whatever it is, and... Um, you have to remember that if a business is reaching out to you, especially if it's a big business, like not just a small business, one woman show kind of thing like me, like if my business reached out to you, but if like a big art supply company reaches out to you about sending you their products, they have a marketing budget. And the only reason they might say no to you asking for money is because lots of other artists already say yes to doing it for free. So I... I'm not going to spend tons of time on this, but it's a hill I'm willing to die on because um, you deserve to get paid. And as a content creator, your time is valuable and your work is valuable. So if you ever work with businesses in an influencer capacity, you should always get paid in addition to the product. One other thing about influencer marketing is you want to make sure you're only working with brands that you would be willing to put your name with. You don't want to just say yes to anybody who comes along because if you say yes to a product that you don't actually believe in and then you market it and your audience like believes you but then finds out that it's not actually a good product then they lose trust in you and your most valuable asset uh, as an influencer is the engagement and trust of your audience. So that's my thing about influencer marketing. Okay. 
So those are all online ways that you can make money. Next, um, like locally working with businesses to make money, you can paint murals or letter chalkboards or um, anytime a business wants you there to do something at their actual location. Lots of, biz lots of businesses need artists for things like that. Also events, I have been asked to do like custom illustrations on site before, um, like custom calligraphy on site before on like ornaments or various products or whatever. Um, those are often for like product launches or business openings or festivals. Um, venues will want will reach out to local makers to do on-site art so that is something that happens okay so next is b2c business to customer work and we'll, under the scope of client work i would say a big portion of that for artists and letterers is weddings so um i'm not going to go too much into weddings because you probably already know but on this powerpoint is a short list of basically everything that you might that a, a bride or groom might be requesting an artist to help them with. Um, so business to customer, because, and I say business to customer because often you're working directly with a bride or groom as opposed to a wedding planner. But I will say sometimes you might be approached by wedding planners or photographers to help with something and in that way it might be kind of it would be business to business or kind of like a hybrid, like a photographer is already working with a bride and wants to bring you on for this specific thing. Uh, either way, weddings is a big thing. And then commissions is the last client work that I would say is business to customer. So that's when, as opposed to a business reaching out to you to create something for them, it's some random person or someone you know reaches out to you to commission something. So that could be anything, any kind of art from like portraits or commission you to make paintings similar to what you do already or anytime somebody approaches you and says, hey, you make things, I want you to make this thing for me and I'll pay you for it, that's a commission. Okay, so that is the what of client work. And again, not like an exhaustive list, but fairly exhaustive for the research that I've done. And now let's move on to the where.